Okay, we're we're arguing about whether or not we're ready, but we are here. <laughs> I'm Amelia. I'm Tom. And oh, uh, hold on. <laughs> there we are. There we're side by side. I think, depending on how your how All your right. computer works. All right. So we have a story today from Mark 12. This is like the most important teaching in the whole Bible. So listen up. <laughs> oh, Tom tells the story. <laughs> well, Jesus had a series of conflicts with the various authorities, the chief priests, the scribes, the elders, the Pharisees, the Herodians, uh, the Sadducees, and uh, so one of the scribes drew near and saw them disputing with one another. And when he saw that he answered well, he said to Jesus, what commandment is first of all? And Jesus said, first is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your understanding and with all your strength. And the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said, that to love the Lord with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered well, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared ask him any questions. Thank you, Tom. Um, okay, we have a, a scribe coming to Jesus and asking a question. And usually when the scribes or Pharisees come to Jesus to ask questions, they're not necessarily real questions they're trying to trick him according to mark is that the case here is is it like a real question or is it a trick question well i don't think it's a trick question uh and there is no indication that he is trying to trick him and prior to this mark has made that clear uh what the motive of the scribes the herodians and so on uh has been so i don't think I don't think it's presented as a trick question. I think it's a real question. Uh, and it was a question that was widely asked by the rabbis. There were 613 commandments in, uh, that were derived from the various parts of the scriptures, mainly from Deuteronomy. Uh, and so a frequent question that rabbis discussed with one another was, which is the greatest, the most important of the commandments. Uh, so there were commandments, for example, uh, you know, you should respect your elders. Uh, you should teach Torah to your children. Uh, you should not make an idol. Uh, there are a series of commandments about what you should not eat. Uh, so, and there are a series of commandments about uh, what things you, what persons you should not have uh, relations with. Uh, there is a, you know, 613 or a lot of commandments. And so to sort out which were most important was a primary question in relation to the discussions about the law. Uh, so this was a, uh, an invitation to rabbinic conversation and exploration and jesus responds by quoting scripture where what's he quoting here well it's the shema it's from deuteronomy 6 
So uh, what is so Shema? What does that mean? Because not necessarily everybody watching will know what the Shema means. Oh, well, Shema is here. Uh, so it's the first word of the commandment, hear, O Israel, uh, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and so on. Okay, so, and so then it lists four different things, right? Uh, heart, mind, heart, what are they? Heart, soul, strength. Heart, soul, understanding, and strength. And strength. Yeah, but Jesus does, Jesus says like three of them, doesn't he? Or, no, he, he says, says four. He says four, there but he says three. mine, right? There are three in the Shema in Deuteronomy. And Jesus adds. Oh, he, okay. He uh, adds one. The commandment with all your mind. Well, why would he add that? Well, my hunch is that in the Greco Roman world and in the story that Mark is telling, I think, to uh, the uh, diaspora community of Israel uh, in the Greco Roman world. Uh, in the context of the development of philosophy, there was a priority on understanding, on the mind. And so for this commandment to have credibility, uh, it had more credibility when it was to love God with all of your mind. Uh, and that meant with all of your philosophical understanding. And so this added a dimension. So you mean Jesus changed the scriptures a little bit in order to oh, make yeah. it more relevant to the context? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Imagine that, huh? Yeah, well, yeah. I guess I guess Jesus was allowed to do that. <laughs> well, that's one of the interesting things about uh, the stories of Jesus is that he rarely, almost never, cites precedents from uh, the... Uh, traditions of Israel, from what uh, we call the Old Testament. Uh, so this is a striking instance of his uh, citing uh, and quoting a, uh, a part of the scriptures. And, and the command here is to love God in these different ways. Right. Uh, well, how does how do we really love God, or, or how what did they what did they mean by that? Well, I, I think that's a I think that's really a good question. What does it mean to love God? Uh, well, with all the heart means with all the emotion, with all the uh, the feelings and associations of attachment and devotion. Uh, with all of the soul is with all of the spiritual energy uh, that is lodged in, and for that energy to be focused on the love of God. With all the mind is to love God with your mind, to love God in the thinking. And so it is to love God where all questions can be asked, and all things can be explored with the mind, and to love God with the mind, uh, and to love God with strength, with all the strength is to use all of the resources of the body to love God, and to focus on applying your strength to that uh, love of God, to love God with movement, to love God with your actions. Uh, so, the commandment explores the various dimensions of love. And then Jesus adds a second commandment, which he says is just like that one. He equates it to loving God. Well, he just says the second. Yeah. Here. Okay. Oh, all right. Maybe I'm thinking of Matthew. Um, yeah. Yeah, That's, I think I am. Yep. Which is to love your neighbor as yourself. Is that also in, the, uh, in his scriptural tradition? And yes, that's from do uh, that's from Leviticus, and so it is a it's from a different source, you know the Shema from Deuteronomy, this from Leviticus. So this is Jesus uniquely putting together these two commandments mm -hmm. and lifting them up as the uh, as the most important. 
Yeah, well, I wonder if part of the coupling of those two things um, is the, at least one way that we express our love for God is by expressing our love for our neighbors. Yeah, I think it's reciprocal yeah. that the love of the neighbor is huh. then uh, gets extended or is connected with the love of God. Yeah. And the love of God means and results in the love of the neighbor. That, right. that, that love extensions uh, extends from God to the neighbor. And the neighbor in Jesus' teaching is everyone, including uh, your enemies. So this commandment is foundational to the development of uh, what became the ethical traditions of uh, both uh, Judaism and Christianity in the development of the two sects uh, from the first century. Well, I guess we sort of needed um, some interpretation of, of neighbor, what neighbor means, which of course we get in the uh, parable of the Good Samaritan, but that's Luke, you know, because yeah. neighbor could be just, you know, those who live in your immediate vicinity. Right. Um, so, but but that's not part of what this uh, this scripture passage is about. Um, so, after Jesus names the two commandments, then the scribe responds very positively. And just in case you didn't get the two commandments, the scribe repeats them. <laughs> um, he also includes his own words. Yeah, in his own words, he also he starts by saying, "You you truly have said that um, he is one, and besides him there is no other." Right. And I wouldn't ordinarily point out, Tom, when you miss something, but you did miss that. So I want people to, yes, I to be aware that, that that's there. Right. Um, I also missed, uh, there are no command, there's no commandment greater than these. Uh, so, yes. Oh, at the end. Oh, after Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, why is the scribe so positive and so enthusiastic, do you think? In his response to what Jesus says, well, I think it's because he uh, they had reached a, a point of agreement, and that he recognized also that these were the primary commandments. Uh, it's a sign of both his respect for Jesus, and that is extended, you know, from Jesus to him. Uh, that when he saw that he answered well, uh, he said, "You're not far from the kingdom of God." Yeah. Uh, so th this was a, a a conversation of mutual respect yeah. Uh, yeah. and uh, validation of each of them agreeing on uh, which of the commandments were most important. Yeah. Yeah. What a strong affirmation it was of the scribe that he was not far, that when Jesus says you are not far from the kingdom of God. Right. Yeah. Um, and then at the very last line of this story is no one, after that, no one dared ask him any questions. Uh, why would that be? Well, uh, in this case, uh, after he had answered all of the questions where they were trying to trick him, in this case, uh, he found an ally, uh, one who agreed on the basic principles of the interpretation of the law. And so uh, they were no longer willing to risk the, the, uh, uh, the intimidation the, uh, that was part of Jesus' response uh, to these questions where they tried to trick him. They didn't, they didn't succeed, so they gave up. Uh, it's the end of the stories of the conflict in the, uh, in the temple ministry. So they couldn't discredit him in that way uh, so then they had to seek well somebody saw it some other ways <laughs> right undermine his influence yeah yep. shouldn't work either <laughs> yeah well in the long run um but on the other hand has has jesus is imperative here these two commandments been widely accepted How? well it's interesting what's happened in the history of philosophy Immanuel Kant, uh, in his uh, Metaphysics of Morals, exploring the first principles of moral understanding, 
he rephrased uh, as a rational conclusion uh, that uh, the uh, that the principle of loving one's neighbor as oneself uh, was an important principle. So this is a, a quotation of the first of the imperatives, act only according to that maxim by which at the same time uh, you can will that it should become a universal law. Uh, so Kant was trying to establish ethics on a rational foundation, not on the basis of religious devotion. But he came to, there's a sense in which this great philosopher came to a similar place, that is, that he also was rephrasing uh, Jesus' teaching about uh, love of the neighbor uh, as a first principle. Mm -hmm. And I guess I just want to mention in terms of the influence of this far and wide um, in terms of, you know, we're, we're often asking how does this scripture connect with ministries of peace and justice today. Um, yep. Last year, just about this time last year it was November of 2020, I was asked to teach um, a session on the book White Fragility. And so I was thinking about what I like, I almost always ground my teaching in some sort of scripture. I need to do that for myself. Um, and this is the passage that I came up with. It just seemed like such a clear, you know, connection to, uh, to a study of, 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 of white people doing differently with regard to systemic racism. Um, right. And I think this is the a case in which this principle uh, also was an ancient principle, but it's also one that has been reaffirmed uh, by contemporary biological and genetic research. That is, that races do not exist. There is no such thing as a white race, as a black race, as a yellow race. Races don't exist. There's one race, the human race, and we are all neighbors and humans who are members of the same race. So the whole structure of racism is called into question by this teaching and uh, of Jesus. Uh, and also, it's called into question by contemporary scientific research in relation to the identification of what are the things that distinguish people. No such thing as race. OK, right. Yes, that's great. I'm just laughing because Tom's. this is one of Tom's very important um, teachings that he wants to get across to people. But yeah, anyway, this, this, this scripture, this <laughs> command to love our neighbors as we love ourselves is very applicable to, to many, uh, many questions today, many, is, many issues today. Right. So, so if you never learn if you ne have their if you ne source in this commandment. Right. If you never learn any other scripture by heart, this is a good one to learn this week. Right. right. So have a great week, everybody. Blessings, energy. <laughs>